You've made it. This is Bills by the Numbers, presented by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Coming up, why the Bills' propensity for big plays and a top-flight takeaway defense lead the league in this critical advanced metric. Super Bowl winning head coach Brian Billick on how important toxic differential is to a team's fortunes. And Steve is challenged with naming the teams with the most 20-plus yard pass plays. Flip the coin already! Good to have you with us here on Bills by the Numbers. Bills Wall of Famer Steve Tasker, Bills Insider Chris Brown with you. And it's a metric that was invented by a former Super Bowl winning coach in this century's first decade. I feel like a history teacher. It combines two elements of a game that historically have been some of the biggest driving forces that lead to victory, turnovers and big plays. It's called toxic differential, where turnover differential and big play differential are combined to provide one overriding metric. Steve, that figure has been pretty accurate in coinciding with playoff caliber teams in the NFL with very few exceptions. And I'm sure, Steve, it doesn't surprise you in the least that teams that have more takeaways and more big plays than their opponents win more games. Makes a lot of sense. And it's also one of those metrics, too, that it's not like fourth down conversions where you have control. So, yeah, it's time to go for it here or it's time not to go for it or it's time to go for the two point. conversions. Yeah. It's not like that. It's hard to control mistakes yeah. and catastrophic mistakes are what we're talking about. And that's that's where you get a sense. It's a, it's one of those a little bit of an esoteric statistic where it's a little bit. It's out of your control. You're try, you know, it's it's a pl- it's a one of those attributes to a team that they, they don't make mistakes. Well, that's great, but you know, as soon as they make a mistake, oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's it's and that's why I think it does hold a lot of water as to giving you a feel for consistently who makes the fewest mistakes, consistently yeah. who's the hardest to keep a lid on their offense of, of big plays, and that's why I think it's a really accurate measure of. The things that are hard to measure, if you get my opinion. You know what I mean? Yeah, and the other thing, too, is, you know, we hear the Bills players talk all the time about how much forcing turnovers is preached in this building, on the practice field, in the meeting rooms, in the film session, in the film study. And still, while you can, as a defense, affect a quarterback into probably making some ill-advised decisions through the course of a football game, you still have to capitalize on those ill-advised decisions and complete the takeaway. Right. You know, you can you can have a guy throw it right in your bread basket, but if you don't catch the ball, you're not getting the takeaway. So yeah. while you can affect a quarterback in turning the ball over or punch a ball out to force a fumble, as the Bills will see this week, Darius Leonard is big on that, the Colts linebacker, there are still <laughs> – variables at work there where you've got to come through too. the right. bills have so have the Colts for that matter yeah. as we'll find out when we go over the toxic differential rankings a little bit later but to put it in proper context if people aren't familiar with what toxic differential is exactly it adds up runs of 10 yards or more and pass plays of 20 yards or more for your team's offense then it subtracts runs of 10 yards or more or passes of 20 yards or more against your defense. So that's your big play differential. That number is then added to turnover differential. Your team's takeaways versus your team's giveaways. You add those two together, you get toxic differential. And yeah, Steve, it's, a nice, it's a nice stat because anybody can do it. This isn't like quarterback oh, ratings. Yeah. We're not, this isn't we like, don't need a slide rule for right, this This one. isn't like a QBR or something like that yeah. where the perfect rating is 158.7, some cockamamie thing like that. This is a, a stat, a toxic differential, something every jamoke like me and you could do. Yeah. And it make it holds a lot of water because, and Marv Levy said it back in the early nineties with our team. He goes, Hey, listen, because we had a couple of bad breaks or whatever. And you know, you overcome them or you don't. And he said, listen, it's not what, it's not the turnover that does it to you. It's how you respond. Mm. It's not us turning the football over to them. That gives them the win. It's how they respond and how we respond to our own mistake. That's, that's the difference making in turnovers. And that's, he's right. Uh, this stuff's going to happen in games. A bad bounce, uh, you know, the wind catches a kick and blows it out. How do you respond? How do you respond to a bad break or a catastrophic mistake? And this 
you know, this toxic differential gives you an idea of how teams do that consistently. Right. And this was what this is what spawned the idea to do this on today's program, because I had a hunch based on how the bill season is going right. with takeaways and with their ability to put up big plays on offense, that they would rank highly in this category. So bills fans will be happy to know through week 10, the bills lead the league in toxic differential with a figure of plus 38. Not all that surprising. If you've watched their offense and defense perform, right? Well, they both rank very high at one point. They're number one offense, number one defense in the league. I mean, yeah, that's, that's how it works. And it's, you see good teams play. They overcome things like that. They got great players, and great players emerge like that. So, yeah, it's not not surprising. but And it also gives you some hope that the bad things that have happened to the Bills, like Josh Allen losing his footing on a fourth down conversion at the end of the game, you can't respond to that. Uh, th things of that nature. Uh, the fact that the Bills have had like three or four games this year in rainstorms or windstorms, one or the other, which – is an effect has an effect on how your team performs and and how well they can execute all those things are in the mix and yeah it's no surprise that the bills are at the top of the league in uh, in the way they respond to good and bad things among the other teams at the top of the league in this metric minnesota new england cleveland dallas indianapolis arizona and the rams who's the biggest surprise among that group for you i think minnesota yeah uh, I, 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 a little bit of it is because Minnesota's in the other conference. They're in the a NFC North. You, you don't really, we don't watch a lot of their games. Uh, they're a little off our radar. So them being at the top of this is a little surprising. Their offense isn't anything to write home about, but they do have a good core receivers. Uh, a couple of good guys that can really play. Thielen and Jefferson, those guys can, yeah. can do it. Kirk Cousins has always been steady and able to get the ball out. So um, their defense is the surprising thing. You know, the turnovers and the toxic things that go for the uh, for your team instead of again and against the other team, I think that's a little surprising for me with Minnesota. Among uh, the other teams, I would say Minnesota is surprising for me too. They, but when you think about it a little bit deeper, you're like, okay, they probably get a good number of twenty plus yard pass plays from Jefferson, right. and they have thirty six on the season, which was one of it wasn't the highest figure, but it was up there. And they've got Dalvin Cook, who probably has a good number of ten plus yard runs. Right. So on the offensive side, they don't that's turn it good. Over too much, that's right. Right, and you know you you're like, wow, they're not doing that well. They've lost like three games on the last play of the game, right? Uh, this season, so it's <laughs> it's been particularly painful for them. I, I guess if you win even two of those three, they're probably in a playoff position as a wild card spot in the NFC right now. But that is right. not the case. Green Bay is right on the cusp of the top ten, Steve. But Tampa Bay, Baltimore, and Tennessee. Are the noticeable absences from the top of the leaderboard in toxic differential? All four are in the middle of the pack with seven games to play. The Ravens struggle in toxic because they've turned the ball over too much right. and have also given up 40 pass plays of 20 yards or more. Their defense has struggled this year, Steve. Tampa has among the fewest run plays that have gone for 10 yards or more because, quite frankly, they don't care to run it all that much. And Tennessee also has 38 pass plays of 20 yards or more allowed. Their defense has played better of late. But I guess the bottom line here, Steve, is there are flaws for all of these teams. Hasn't stopped Tennessee from winning. Hasn't led to a downturn in the season for any of those teams in the playoff race. Why do you think that might be? Yeah, that's a good. I think one of the things is that in the Tennessee Titans strike me, and we've seen them play, you know, certainly against the Bills, they're mentally really tough and when the in crucial downs the Tennessee Titans and maybe you can say this it's the Mike Vrabel effect or you know the old New England Patriot philosophy they just don't beat themselves in critical downs and you know this you know toxic differential aside that's where I see the Tennessee Titans winning is on critical downs on fourth down conversions on third down conversions on and different things. They just don't beat themselves. And I think even this last week, they, they're good enough that in the L.A. Rams on Thursday night, two Thursdays ago, they get spotted 14 points, they pull out a win. Yeah. Uh, the other team starts to press, and they do make mistakes. And that's where the Tennessee Titans are better than anybody else. And we watched Tampa hit the skids because of turnovers right. last week. 
So, you know, they have a loss that not many people were anticipating they would suffer based on the matchup they had last week, and they drop a game because of that. And Green Bay, you know, they're 8-2, and two, but they lose a game primarily because their quarterback's on the COVID list. So that's right. the main reason for that. All right, good discussion, though, on Toxic Differential. We'll talk more about this, including its genesis, with our guest, former Super Bowl winning head coach with the Baltimore Ravens, Brian Billick. But right now, it is time for the numbers game, where we quiz Steve on some NFL stat, a leader's list, something. Anything is fair game. And this week, in a play off of Toxic Differential, we're testing Steve on the teams with the most pass plays of 20 yards or more this season. It's one of the elements that goes into figuring out Toxic Differential. Steve, are you ready? I think so. All right, so I need the top teams in pass plays of 20 yards or more. This is through week 10. All right, so tell me how you feel here. Who, Who... Who's tickling your fancy on this? I'm going to say, well, I'm going to say Minnesota. Minnesota is in the top 10. They are number eight. We're going to see how many in the top 10 that you can get. Buffalo. Buffalo just outside the top 10. They're 11th in 33. In 20, in 20 plus pass. 20 plus yard pass plays. They only have 33. Remember, there were a couple weeks there where people were keeping the lid on them. Arizona. Arizona number five. 39 pass plays of 20 yards or more. L.A. Rams. Rams with 41, tied for third. I'm going to say, I'm just on a hot streak here. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to take a quick look at because I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying this is about you know, really good teams that are airing it out. Right. Kansas City. Kansas City's tied with Buffalo in the 11th <sighs> spot, 33. Yeah. Okay. I will say Dallas, of course. Dallas, 39. They're tied for fifth with Arizona. Green Bay. Green Bay is 10th. 34 pass plays of 20 yards or more. I'm going to say pass plays. Yeah. I was going to say Baltimore, but they'd be run plays. I'll say Baltimore. And you would be correct. Baltimore has 38. You're right. Remember... Roman, Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator, has been incorporating more deep passing yeah. shots as that receiving core has gotten healthier. They have 38. They're seventh in the league. I'll say. So, Steve, you've got four teams left here. You're killing it right Tampa now. Tampa Bay. Tampa is number two with 43. All right. 43 pass plays of 20 yards more. They almost don't run it anymore. New Orleans. Not New Orleans. Gah! I knew I was going out of for that. Gosh. New Orleans right. is 31st. Have, have I said Arizona yet? You did. So you've got three teams left, and I will tell you all of them are in the AFC. Okay, then I'm going to go L.A. Chargers. Chargers are not there. They are down at 16th with just 30 plays. Oh, I know. 20 yards. More. Vegas. Las Vegas is number one in the league really? with 47. Wow. 47. That got me. It's the old school Raiders again. All right. Chucking it down the field. Um, I'll say, let me see. Who's, who's, what was one? I will oh, say I this. I say one. Jamar Chase. I'm going to say Cincinnati. Cincinnati's correct. Number nine. You've got one left, and this is the surprise team. This is the surprise team up there. It is an AFC club, as I mentioned. The last three that you had to get were all in the AFC. I will say Indianapolis. It is not Indianapolis. They are 17th with 29 such plays. Tennessee. It is not Tennessee either, sir. I haven't said Tennessee. Or yeah, I, they're 28th. They've had a banged up receiving core, too. New England. That is it. New yeah. England. 41 pass plays of 20 yards or more. They have eight more than the Bills. They've got do. a lot of catch and runs. Eight more than the Bills. Because that's it. The short, yard, short pass with the long run yeah. is... But good job. You got them all. all you right. only had one, all two, right. three, four, five, six. You had 16 guesses, and you got 10 out of 16. That's all a pretty right. good That's showing cool. for right. you. You're on a roll, Steve, I'm... with the numbers game the last few weeks. I have, nice all I job. can say about that performance is I didn't embarrass myself. Yeah, which, right. So, well, that's which, the goal, right? Which I've been known to do. Attention, daily fantasy players. Right now, new customers can get a 20% deposit bonus up to $500 on your first deposit. Just sign up today by going to FanDuel.com slash Bills. That's FanDuel.com slash Bills. FanDuel, the official partner of the Buffalo Bills. Right now, 
We want to welcome in the Super Bowl winning coach who brought the advanced metric of toxic differential to the light of day. It's former Ravens head coach Brian Billick. All right, coach, as we told you, we've been carrying the torch for your toxic differential metric here over the years. My first question to you, though, is what was the genesis of that in your head with that as a measurement of quality play? Back when I was with the Vikings, uh, but this is back in the 90s, we had a, um, a computer guy. And then you, now everybody has, you know, full staffs of yeah, analytics right. guys. But this was a guy that uh, was one of, on the forefront of it named Mike Ayers. Great guy. And his office was next to mine. And his job was, from the computer standpoint, the, the entire organization, actually more on the administrative side but obviously was a football fan and he would play with these numbers and move them around. And he and I would sit and have discussions and, and he would look at the Delta on uh, monies you spent on players versus return and things like that. Uh, and as we looked at the game, really just playing around with it. And, and it's a time old adage. I mean, from day one, it's, you know, can't turn the ball over every coach that I've ever had is, you know, and, but, but the fact that that and, and the big play, which obviously is what the league is about right now, and the fact that it's four-dimensional, you can't just give up, not give up turnovers, but you got to get turnovers. You can't just get big plays. You, you, you can't give up the big play. So when you piece those together, um, it, it actually gives you a, a real understanding, particularly in today's game, that, that you better have a certain amount of explosiveness to you because the idea that you're going to go predictably 10, 12 play drives in this league without something bad happening is, is problematic. And, and of course, you can't turn the ball over. Yeah, and, and I was think, telling Brownie earlier, my old coach Marv Levy said the same thing. And this, this stat, this toxic differential, kind of goes behind the numbers because it's not just the fact that you got a turnover. It's also how you respond to the turnover on both sides, your right. defense and your offense. So it, even if the stat happens, the response over the course of the season gives you an idea of how the team is consistently over time when good or bad things happen. And it gives you something as a coach to actively, because it's all well and good when you get statistics and they say, okay, well, they run the ball here 57% of the time. <sighs> okay, great. What, what do I do with that? You know, that 7% will kill you. But but the fact that you know, Greg Williams years ago when when uh, New Orleans was making a Super Bowl run took a very active stance of okay look for us to win we don't care what our numbers are we don't care how many yards we give up we don't care if we can just get turnovers given our offense and Drew Brees and that they're big play and he tends not to turn the ball over if we get one turnover two turnovers and put Drew Brees on a short field we win the game. And they took that to an incredible level, which again, that's what you, yeah, as a coach, as you look at it, if, if you're a team that, that is struggling coming up with big plays, uh, then obviously, you know, a number one priority for your defense, you may have to back your defensive coordinator off a little bit and say, look, we can't afford to give up big plays because we can't make up the difference. So if we've got to go the length of the field, make them go the length of the field. So it's an active, you know, an interactive dynamic. I always, thought toxic differential accurately pegged the most dangerous teams because they're arguably the best at being able to turn the fortunes of a game with a big play, whether that happened on offense or defense. Was there ever a time in your coaching career that you recall where, because I'm, I'm confident you were kind of keeping your ear to the ground on these numbers, where your team was matched up against another top toxic team like, I'm just curious as to the anticipation for that as a coach, number one, yeah. and then how things and, and played it, out, number two. Well, let's go back to our Super Bowl year. Uh, my Super Bowl year, I should say. Um, we weren't that good offensively, we, but, but we weren't very explosive offensively. But we were second in the league in rushing offense, and we led the league in fewest turnovers. Mm. Okay? We had a defense, maybe the best single-season defense in the history of the league, that could right. get turnovers. And you weren't going to get big plays. So we that's when I finally woke up during the course of the season going, look, we can win a Super Bowl with this group as long as we stay to those parameters. And that was awfully conservative offensively, particularly for an offensive guy. Uh, when I was with the, the 98 Viking group that broke the all-time scoring record. Yeah. And we were big play after big play and did a good job of not turning the ball over. Well, that allowed the defense then to take on a mode that says, okay, our, our offense gets so many big plays. 
we get that score differential. Let's just don't give them that opportunity. So if that means we get a little passive defensively and make them see if they can go the length of the field, well, maybe they can, but they're going to run out of time because they're going to take 12 plays to go the length of the field and kick a field goal. And our offense comes on the field and in three plays, we have a touchdown. So, so it is something that you can actually coach to uh, and, and play to the strengths of your offense and defense. And it comes down to, it, like you said, that organizations win. I mean, you can say, yeah, you've got a star quarterback, but it's, it's everybody in the building. It's the offense, it's the special teams, it's defense, and, and having enough you know, ability. And, and you, you mentioned that New Orleans team, you know, if they can just get turnovers, you think back to their Super Bowl win, they did a surprise onside right out of halftime to get an extra possession. Right. That kind of thing is a turnover. Right. It's yeah. a turnover. That right. goes, I mean, that's a whole organizational thing. And a head coach, like, like you know, you got to know when to like forget it. We're gonna we're gonna roll the dice here because it the percentages say we need to, as opposed to, you know what, just just play too deep safety, let them go the long way. Yeah, it's not perfect, but but and you're exactly right. That's an excellent prototypical game because. Peyton Manning isn't going to turn the ball over a whole lot. So how do we flip the script here? Well, we need that turnover. Well, it's not going to happen with our defense and that offense. Let's, let's see if we can get it done on special teams, but there's, it's a risk reward. You know, it goes down and Sean Payton deserves a huge amount of credit for taking that risk. Had it not worked, it would have gone down as the biggest bonehead move in the history of coaching, right? It's all through the prism of what works and what doesn't. The Bills are at the top of the league right now in toxic differential, but in your experience in tracking this metric as a coach, how often were teams that maybe got out of the gate fast or even to midseason here at the top, how, how well have they been able to sustain it? Do generally the teams are, that are good in toxic stay there for the most part? Well, the good, the, what the Bills have done, and this goes back to the interactive part of it, and you, and you mature with it during the course of the season. Mm-hmm. Josh Allen, who's been brilliant, um, has shown the capability to, to generate the big play. I mean, anybody can throw a play after play down the field, but can you do it and not turn the ball over? That's, you know, there's, there's the tricky yeah. part. Well, they're not uh, for the most part. So, so you've got that formula going. You've got a quarterback that you can trust to take those shots but isn't going to get you in trouble. So now for Sean McDermott, it's a matter of the defense, and they've been very, very, very good, is again saying, okay, we trust that aspect of it. So on our part, it's a little like what I was saying about that 98 group. Okay, um, maybe we opt towards the side of let's not give up the big play. Does that mean you you blitz a little less? You don't leave yourself vulnerable quite as much? Because the, is the team we're playing capable of matching are big play offense and not turning the ball over. And a lot of teams you play aren't. So great, great. We'll let them take their shots because we're going to get a turnover. So we'll do all the things we normally do. But if you're playing a, a, a really good quarterback or a good offense, the fact that your offense has that dynamic going, maybe you are a little more conscious. If I'm playing the Kansas City Chiefs, which a lot of people have done this year, it's, look, I'm just going to configure myself and not get up a big play. I don't know if they can, you know, yeah, they're capable of, you know, matriculating it down the field as a famous term goes, but, but we're not going to give up the big play. And that's where Kansas city, we, you know, to bring it back to the top, what's the difference in Kansas city this year, all up until last week, they weren't getting the big play. And well, they, they were turning it over too, coach after big play, but up to, up to this point. Now they had six of them last week and that's why yeah. they had the big win prior to that teams were getting very, very passive and they were only getting you know, one or two explosive plays of 20 yards or more uncharacteristic of Kansas city. So that was the biggest difference that that I see in Kansas city this year. Now this last game, they seem to get that formula back. We'll see if they'll do the same going forward. Yeah. And and to take it a step further, they were also turning the ball over a lot in the, in the first eight, eight, nine. Absolutely. So is there a way when you have a team like that, that you know is certainly capable of being good in toxic, but has kind of hit the skids in one of those areas that affects toxic differential, like turning the ball over, where you can kind of reel it back in as a coach and use this. Because I think the best thing toxic does is it's it serves as a guide for almost right. how to coach your team, right? Right. And the good thing for Andy Reid is that they've done it. And so he can go back and show them the numbers, show them film, guys, guys. This is what we did before, 
But this is what we're doing now, whether it's Patrick Mahomes just throwing up an errant ball, whether he's forcing the ball in. Patrick Mahomes, one of the most brilliant talents we've seen in a long time, this so far this year up to this point has been a little, I don't want to say this, I don't want to be just a little full of himself. Oh, yeah, I can make this throw. Yeah, I'll do because I've got I've done it in the past. Yeah. Right. And it hasn't quite turned out. So he, yeah, he's one that's got to reel that in. We know he's capable of those plays, but making a little bit better judgment. You look at Aaron Rodgers, for my money, the best quarterback in the game right now, notwithstanding Tom Brady, do all due respect to the wins that he's had. But the biggest thing that that were to me that separates, if you if you ask me and say, okay, who's one and who's two, you look at at Aaron Rodgers touchdown to interception ratio, which is just incredible i mean to be really good minimum you got to be two to one okay to, to survive in this league and the good ones whether it's bees peyton manning you know they're going to get up there and, and and be closer to three to one tom brady three i think aaron Rodgers currently is five to one right over a long period this isn't just a season where okay yeah. the guy got hot you're talking about a long career right those numbers are st- well what it's big plays not turn the ball over. yeah and last one for me coach this uh this you start to dig into the to the root cause of this. You get to say, okay, now we're going to keep a lid on this team because they've got big playability. How much, though, when you get down to the root of it, every coaching staff is limited by the strengths and weaknesses of their own roster. Like we right. can't we can't play that team like that because we don't have the horses, or we have to play this team like this because we you know this is where our strengths lie. It all kind of boils down to you still got to be a football coach and know who the guys are in your locker room as much as you know what that other team's strengths and weaknesses are. Yeah, the vulnerabilities. When people ask me all the time about that that um, ninety eight defense that we had, or that or the uh, two thousand one uh, defense we had in Baltimore, and there were a lot of reasons they were good. Great athletes, uh, incredible scheme. Marvin Lewis had put together uh, Hall of Famers at so many key positions. Um, but the two things that I always say is that one, they, they, we were very athletic, great open field tackle. We minimized the big plays of people underneath you throw a flare or shallow route, whatever, boom, you were on the ground. No one's breaking tackles and getting big plays that way. The second thing is they did a great job. They knew the vulnerabilities of every deep. I used to run the scout team. It was my way of kind of seeing what the game plan was. And, and again, touching every player on the team when you run both the offensive and defensive scout team. So when I'd run the offensive scout team, one, these guys would get in a formation or motion and they'd start calling out what the play is. And I'm looking at both sides of the card, like going, is that written on both sides? How do they know that? <laughs> well, they were so well prepared. Plus they knew every defense is beatable. There's a vulnerability to every defense. The key is, do you know what that is? And our guys were were supremely confident, okay, this defense does such and such, but if they want to throw it to the deep out, okay, they got us because that we're giving them that. We're taking everything else away. Okay, if, if they want to run in underneath and get some, okay, great, because we're taking and, – and, and they understood what those vulnerabilities were. So they understood the defense. You have to have the horses to do it, no question. It still comes down to the athletes. But if you can give them that little bit extra edge, particularly something like this, and you start to show them how this works and then explain to your defense who wants to be aggressive. Okay. This guy's, this is why we're passive. This is how this works. Just don't get, and they start to see it and it plays out. Now they're going, okay, we got it now. And it helps you sell that, that strategy or tactic that you're trying to put them in. Yeah. Really fascinating stuff, coach. Uh, Thanks for kind of painting the picture as to how to apply it. Not only looking at the number and know what it represents, but how to apply it as a coach, to get your team to play the way you need them to play. Great conversation, and we appreciate the time as always. Thanks for giving it to us. All right, guys. Thanks, Coach. Sounds great. All right, glad we could get Coach Billick on with us to explain how the toxic differential metric came to be. We now turn to the latest FanDuel Pick'em style game called High Low, and it's free to play on the FanDuel app. Pick teams that you believe will score highest and lowest in four different categories. The closer you are to being right, the bigger the prize can be. If you get every pick right, you could win a million dollars. Just visit FanDuel.com slash high low to get started. Steve and I are going to make our picks now, and we changed it up a bit this week. Steve is going to pick the high and low for points, and then I'll follow with passing yards. You have both high and low for you. points this week, Steve. What do you got? Right. All right. For high, I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys because they're playing the Chiefs. 
I think the Chiefs are gonna, you know, the Chiefs are getting it together, and I think Cowboys can keep up with those guys. So a shootout, you're expecting. Yes, but a shootout. I think the Cowboys are a better football team. I think they'll beat the Chiefs, and I think okay. the Cowboys are gonna come out with. You know, I think this is going to be a, like a 30 to 40 game. Or well, they had 43 45. last yeah, week. Exactly. So I, that's why I think uh, the Cowboys are going to be the highs. And for the lows, I'm going to go with the Chicago Bears. Mm. Uh, I just Shocking. Don't, yeah. They're three and six. They're playing a Ravens team that just got embarrassed. I think their defense is going to, yeah. the Raven defense is going to bounce back. And I think the Bears are going to struggle. All right. High for passing yards this week. I like the Cardinals against the Seahawks. Seattle ranks 29th in pass defense, and they don't take the ball away a lot. Kyler Murray should be back. So maybe keep an eye on his status if you want to go with our picks this week. But if he plays, I like Arizona for passing yards. Low for passing yards. I'm going to reluctantly put my faith in the Browns being able to hold down anticipated Detroit Lions starting QB Tim Boyle. Jared Goff has an oblique muscle injury, may not play. Even if it is Goff, I expect a resounding response from the Browns after getting waxed right. last week. Lions for low on passing. All right, for me, high in rushing yards. I'm going to go high is going to be the San Francisco Giants. They're playing the Jaguars. San Francisco Giants? The San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> wow. They're going to run it all over the – now, they they got it all over a Rams team, and, and the Rams are a good football team, and the Niners had, you know, lumped them up last week. Yeah. And I think the Jaguars have – I think they're going to struggle against this 49er team. The Niners have a chance to get back to 500 in this game. Mm -hmm. So I think they're really going to, going to grind it out. And for the uh, low-rushing team, there's only one choice here, the New York football Jets. <laughs> I, we watched them play last week. Uh, I think this game's going to get ugly. I, I think I don't. I think the Miami defense has found itself. They're going to be yeah. back to the the they way look, they played a year ago, where they were number one scoring defense in the league. And I think they are going to they are absolutely going to stomp the Jets. Mm. High for sacks. I'm rolling with the Titans. Their defense has really been carrying them the last few weeks. I know Bud Dupree is at 100, percent but Harold Landry and Jeffrey Simmons have been a dynamic duo up front. They're facing the Texans. And for low, I'm going with the same game, picking Houston. Right. Tannehill is a slippery athlete. I don't think the Texans will be able to get to him on the ground, get him on the ground very often for sacks. So that's high low, which you can play for free on FanDuel.com with a chance to win a million dollars. Just go to FanDuel.com slash high low. That's it for us on this edition of Bills by the Numbers. Please subscribe on whatever platform you use to listen to us. We'll have an episode out Thanksgiving week, so be on the lookout for that. And remember, when you need to know about the Bills, you need to check Bills by the Numbers. For Steve Tasker, I'm Chris Brown. Thanks for listening. We will see you next week.